King, one, two. Test, test. I can hear that. Just let me know if you need me to speak. All right, good evening, everybody. I've got 5.30 here, uh, December 5th, 2022. We'll call to order this regular school board meeting for Williston Basin School District number seven. If everybody could stand for the pledge, please. All right, Amanda, if you can call the roll, please. Casmer? Here. Renner? Here. Swint? Here. Walstead? Here. Wheeler? Wheeler? Williams? Here. Gent? Here we do have a quorum, so we will proceed. Uh, item number four on the agenda would be for uh, call for changes to the agenda or the consent agenda. Any items currently on the consent agenda which require discussion should be moved to the regular agenda at this time. 
Uh, board members, any uh, changes to the agenda or proposed consent agenda? All right, hearing none, uh, agenda will stand as uh, presented and we will move on to item number five, which is the MTSS strategic plan presentation by uh, Ms. Brenner and Mr. Hannig. So welcome. Uh, if we can make sure that the mic is on so it comes through okay on the live feed, the floor is yours. on there and on the folder it includes our MTSS handbook as you could have all seen. I did make a couple adjustments that just are more visually pleasing for people. Um, it was on page four of the handbook. It's the same information, it just looks a little differently. And then also on page five, just the responsibilities and the roles of the different tiers. So that just looks a little different. So you can look at that and notice that. Amanda, can you scroll down a little bit please? strategic priority number three, MTSS, multi-tiered system of support, we had three objectives to start with that we created last year. Um, the first one was to create, each, each school will create one team that meets weekly. We have flow charts that have been created and annually reviewed for behavior and academics to guide elementary, middle school, and high school teachers in the district. And then the third goal or objective was a common MTSS referral form will be created to ensure consistency across the district. Um, our indicators of success on the bottom there is we would have intervention plans created and documented in Panorama for, tier, for our Tier 2 and Tier 3 students. Um, academic success is recorded and reported annually, and our annual reports to the school board are indicator driven. So here's a little explanation of the pyramid. Okay, so I get to tell a little bit about what this is. I know uh, in education we, we get pretty big with the acronyms and with the letters so MTSS is, is stands for multi-tiered system of support um, in the past you might have heard a term RTI response to intervention um, these are kind of things that have developed synonym synonymously although MTSS is a little stronger it's just a way to keep an eye on all of your students to ensure they're learning so when you look at, at this pyramid here it talks about different tiers the multi-tier that's where that comes from and how most students learn. Most students will be able to learn in their regular ed classroom with regular instruction as long as you're, you're doing the curriculum as we've already developed it for the last year. So they say about 80% of our students are able to get it the first time just from regular instruction. So that's why that, that green is the first one. But what we wanna do is not forget that other 20%. So this is a system that allows us to keep an eye on all of our students so then using some assessments, using um, different data points like the common formative assessments in the classroom where teachers are just checking what students are doing and some of their tests and some of our other things. We can look at those 20% of the kids that aren't getting it and we offer them specific like intervention and ways to get them the information that they didn't get the first time. And so that's what that yellow is there, that targeted where they get most everything, but every once in a while there's something that's not there. And that's about 15%. So that tier two is just a quick, we have time built in our schedules. At the elementary level, they, they have time built in, like with the waiting time, the what I need now. Um, at the high school, we're, we're starting to build this in with uh, some time. We're looking at this in our new schedule, like a specific time every day where the students would go get information that they they're pretty much on level, but they just need this little gap filled. And then at the top, the, the students that just don't seem to get it, no matter what little things we're doing, 
That's where they talk about the tier three. That's where we're going to give them extra classes. This is where, like, at the high school this year, we we're able to work into our schedule a couple of intervention classes where if kids have really struggled with math, really struggled with English, they get their regular English plus extra to give them that little booster shot so that they learn. So part of this is just using a structure and a system to ensure that every student is getting what they need from our school. just a schedule of when each school meets, um, just to ensure that the students who are struggling are going through a um, process to discuss their struggles and how we're gonna meet their needs. always be speaking to the students and so one thing we did realize that we really wanted was a behavior tier chart for our district we have a strong academic tier chart but we want strong behavior tiers so our committee will look at creating that this year and then we're also going to create a cycle with new goals every year for each And then we, we meet as a committee to, to discuss this and we get advice from our, our school level teams on what to bring back to the committee. And then that's where we are looking at using a similar system, systemic model for not just academics, but behavior, uh, social, emotional, and then physical attendance. And that way we can use the, the information and the training we've got to try and hit every student in every year. We've been fortunate enough at, at the high school, we've been working with uh, Dr. Eric Waddell. He's the superintendent at a school in uh, um, Illinois uh, that Adelaide Stevenson is kind of famous because it, it was the superintendent of that school that invented the PLC process, if you've ever heard those letters to go through. So he is now their superintendent. So he's been working with us not only on PLCs, but now taking MPSS because they're a, a
Thank you very much. Board members, any uh, questions for Ms. Brenner or Mr. Hannig? Um, no questions, just, you know, when I first got on the D7 board, the middle school had a really good structured NTSS process, and one of the visions we had at that time before we'd done the strategic plan was to bring consistency across the board. So me as one personal board member, let's watch this kind of develop. Thank you guys so much for bringing so much attention to it, understanding that it's not just academic success that we look at, um, it's also the emotional side of our students and just bringing that consistency and adaptivity um, to each student and each learning environment. So uh, thank you guys so much and great presentation. So, and tell your team thank you as well. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Anybody else, any questions? I just had one quick one. Um, as far as academic results, is fall testing complete? And we'll be seeing that data probably in like January. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, we will move to the superintendent's report next. I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Fadley. Thank you, President Shunt. Um, it's my privilege this evening
so that individuals don't lose interest. Um, for it to provide information that can be used to um, make decisions moving forward. And we really truly believe that utilizing the expertise of RSP and the administration and the board um, reviewing many of these questions before they got to the point that they are, that this information will come back. And when we share it out, it will be very uh, well received and it will provide some additional information. So you can see examples. If you've already been on a survey and it was pushed out, I believe on November 30th, if you haven't taken it, I would encourage you to get excited about it. Um, as excited as I am about receiving the input from the community. But it really takes a look at a holistic view of the work that has gone into uh, creating uh, kind of the driving narrative that um, we have some preparation to do for our future. And that preparation has to do with um, creating additional space for students moving forward. But before we jump to any decisions, we want to make sure we evaluate the needs of the community and the voice of the community. So um, you will see uh, at upcoming meetings, um, probably the second uh, part of the school year, that um, you will see more presentations about this specific information and additional narrative that will be published in our our publications as a district um, so that the community as a whole will see the results of the input that they've taken the time to uh, give to us. Again, um, there's a lot of work to do. We have issues um, at the elementary level, as I've stated. We have issues at the high school level as well with capacity, and we can't sit back and wait until it's um, too late to start planning for those, uh, those realities. So the community as a whole, I look forward to your strong participation in this particular survey. And uh, we will do our absolute best to get the information uh, turned around to you. The survey will remain open until December 20th. And then we will start to accumulate the data. So um, the second piece of information that I want to share this evening has to do with the concept of safety. And uh, you see up here, the board has what, what I refer to as blaze orange, because this is the color my dad used to make me wear when I was a child and I went hunting. And I often tried to figure out why I also had to wear it when I went fishing. But it's just a, I think it's so he, he could uh, keep track of me at all times. But, this emergency procedure manual is kind of our, I'll call it our, our published version of what to do in the event of an emergency. Um, I want to commend the, the committee, the safety committee, uh, specifically Lynn Douglas, um, for putting this together. This was a wish of our faculty and our staff, and I think it's very well done. So you have an example of that this evening. If you have any uh, input, um, we plan to go to print on this uh, in mass quantities in the very new, near future. But if you do have any input, please share that with me. Uh, we will make sure to include um, any input that you might have to help us make this a better product. But I think it is very well done. And again, thank you to Lynn Douglas. And then finally, I will share with you a meeting that I, I had this, uh, this morning um, with our, state, our lead state auditor. They're at the point where they've shared um, recommended audit adjustments um, with me and um, for me to share with um, the president of the board. Um, and um, so with my approval um, this, this afternoon, those adjustments will go back to the, the firm who did our initial audit, Wid, Widmer Roll. Um, there will be a conversation with the uh, state lead state auditor and Widmer Roll. And once Widmer Roll has um, made those adjustments, they will communicate back with the state auditor. And the state auditor 
will then schedule a time for the audit for the state to do a public presentation at a board meeting. So he did say, uh, I was very uh, wanting this to occur on December 19th at our next board meeting, and he did say that was kind of pushing it a little bit. So um, I would anticipate that that would occur at the first board meeting in January. Again, it is contingent upon another firm doing their part in creating those adjustments and then turning them back to the auditor and having the auditor prepare the final report for presentation. So with that, that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Dr. Fadley. Board members, uh, any questions that you have for Dr. Fadley? All right, hearing none. Um, oh, go ahead, Mr. Swint. Absolutely. Uh, no questions from me, Dr. Fadley. Um, just would like to make a comment uh, for those in attendance here this evening and anybody that might be watching the uh, live stream, encourage you to, if you haven't already taken the um, survey, please uh, go out there. You can uh, access that on the homepage of the district's website, uh, williston.schools.org. Um, literally should take you less than five minutes, so not a lot of time commitment, and definitely will provide uh, us as well as the school administration uh, valuable insight here as we uh, continue uh, planning into the next year. So thank you, Dr. Fadley. Um, we will move on to the next agenda item, which is uh, committee reports on number seven, and we'll start with personnel and finance first. Thank you, Mr. Gent. Um, I will very quickly go through the uh, personnel and finance uh, previous agenda on November 29th. Um, the Finance Committee um, reviewed the journal entries from the 21-22 school year and the 22-23 school year to date. Um, those are on the agenda this evening for board approval. This will become a standing item at our personnel and finance and board uh, meeting agendas and uh, this is uh, to increase our internal controls as a school district. We also discussed uh, the draft of a capital project plan. Um, we have completed the first two years uh, of that uh, draft plan and at the bottom of that plan, that is also on the agenda this evening. It, it says that it is a fluid document contingent upon the board um, approval, um, not only of the item, but also um, where that is budgeted from or paid from. Um, next, we, we talked about um, snow removal equipment um, through a national cooperative bid um, organization called Sourcewell to purchase uh, snow removal equipment so that we do not have to contract out in the future. Um, we talked about a long-term uh, uh, contract with Johnson Controls that is our current company that is monitoring our mechanicals and uh, uh, mechanicals and electrical, those types of things throughout our school district. This particular contract will align all of the contracts that we used to have from three into one starting in the spring of 23. Then uh, we discussed the National School Public Relations Association communication audit um, you will also see that on the agenda tonight. Um, and uh, we visited on the retention stipend for uh, school district substitutes, and that's based on a proration of the number of days worked. Um, we talked about Joe's digging uh, and the completion of the foundation work for an entry exit. Um, a second entry exit at Missouri Ridge and then Knife River, we talked about them laying the asphalt over that second entry exit at um, Missouri Ridge. Many of those items are on the agenda tonight and I will add that the Finance Committee did forward those for board consideration. 
Thank you, Dr. Fadley. Any questions on the committee report? I think all of these uh, agenda items uh, have made their way to the board this evening for consideration based off of committee recommendation. Was that on the personnel and finance and building and grounds, Dr. Fadley, or were you moving on to building and grounds as well? The only other report this evening um, would be the uh, policy, but yes, those items have been to buildings and grounds prior to going to the Personnel and Finance Committee. Okay. Thank you. Um, and what I was meaning is, are you presenting on building and grounds, or was that your full report on personnel and finance and building and grounds? Um, the next um, item is the uh, policy committee. Buildings and grounds was done last at the last board meeting. Okay, so I'm just gonna put my comment here so I don't have to put it on each one. Um, as one board member, the, pers or the building and grounds and the personnel and finance at getting up to them, that's been something I've been really wanting to see more of this year. So I'm really excited to see these items finally moved up to the full board level. Um, you know, I know things take time and all that, but I think some of these items have been on our list for quite a while even before you got here. So thank you guys for being diligent, pushing it up to us, getting these bids out and seeing a start date hopefully at some point moving forward because these are all very valid items, I feel like personally. So thank you guys for that. Board members, any other questions or comments on that before we move to policy? All right, go ahead on uh, the next one, Dr. Fadley. Okay, um, then the policy meeting followed on Wednesday, November 30th. Um, the items that were discussed on that particular agenda had to do with um, proposed changes to the administrative regulation policy FFE-AR, and that had to do with acceleration requests and specific language that was um, approved by the um, policy committee to be added to that administrative regulation. Uh, you will see those acceleration requests on the agenda this evening. And uh, in the Friday update, the board received a very uh, detailed uh, analysis of what that uh, particular administrative regulation change was so that uh, you were prepared for um, the accelerated acceleration requests from the middle school this evening. Second, we talked about uh, our lunch services donation policy. We amended policy uh, DE as per requirement. It was a minor change. Uh, we we uh, talked about the uh, capital asset policy. That policy had come before um, the committee once before and we went back in and did some additional work on that and brought it back to the policy committee um, and then a, a, amendment of policy uh, DJA, which allows us to have some leeway in um, giving a retention stipend to our substitutes um, as per the amended language change. So all of those are also on the agenda this evening. Thank you, Dr. Fadley. Board members, any questions on that committee report? All right, hearing none, uh, we'll move to item number eight next, which is public comment. Uh, public participation at board meetings is governed by board policy, BCBA. Meetings of the board are conducted for the purpose of carrying on the business of the schools and therefore are not public meetings, but meetings held in public. Although there is no legal requirement that the public be given an opportunity to speak at board meetings, it is a policy of this board to afford that opportunity in accordance with the following procedures. One, only items on the published Board agenda will be discussed at any meeting of the board unless the superintendent or a board member requests an addition to the agenda of a regular meeting and the board members present to prove in accordance with board policy. One, please state your name for the record. Uh, two, state the agenda item you are commenting on. Comments will be limited to no more than five minutes. No individual may speak more than once. The board has adopted policies governing patron complaints. Public is required to seek redress through these policies. The public will be prevented from commenting on a topic if it is one governed by a district complaint policy and the complainant has not followed the procedure contained in the policy and or the policy prohibits the public from bringing the complaint before the board or two concerns a topic that is prohibited by law from disclosure to the public uh, such as a student's educational record I will just add uh, one other comment here before we open the floor to public comment. 
um, as it pertains to agenda items under new business this evening, uh, 10Q, uh, 10R, 10S, 10T, or 10U. Uh, we will not allow any comment on those items this evening. Reason being, the board uh, cannot hear any details regarding that matter in order to remain neutral and impartial regarding that employment matter. So uh, if everybody could uh, please adhere to that this evening. At uh, this point in time, then, we'll open it up to public comment. If you wish to provide any, please step up to the podium. Uh, just make sure that microphone is on, if you would, please, so uh, it comes through on the live feed. Uh, state your name for the record and the agenda item that you are commenting on this evening. Anybody public comment this evening? All right. Can you just step forward there, Ms. Hollingsworth, please? Is this better? There we go. Is that better? Um, question. You bet. Is it going to be presented by Widmer Roll or will it be presented by the State Auditor's Office, the final ending report? We typically don't take questions during it, I, but I we will we'll make sure that we follow up with you on that item. All right, anybody else this evening? All right, we'll move on then to old business next, number nine. We don't have any old business, so we'll move uh, next to new business. Item 10A uh, would be consideration of approving the resignation of Hunter uh, Higgins. Copy of that resignation letter is included in your uh, board packet. What's the board's wishes on this agenda item? We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Renner. Any questions or discussion? Amanda, let's call the roll on that one, please. Renner? Aye. Swint? Aye. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Kasmer? Aye. Junt? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, 10B is consideration of approving uh, the elevation curriculum. A uh, copy of that proposal is attached in your uh, board book. Dr. Fadley, I believe this was a recommendation out of personnel and finance meeting, maybe a couple meetings ago. That is correct. Okay. What's the board's wishes on this item? I'll move we approve the elevation curriculum. Second. Okay, we've got a motion by Mr. Renner, second by Mr. Walstead. Uh, any questions or discussion amongst the board? As you may recall from the last meeting's uh, presentation, this is related to the uh, ELL. Okay, not hearing any uh, questions or discussions, so let's call the roll on that, Amanda. Swint? Aye. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Kasmer? Aye. Renner? Aye. Junt? Aye, motion carries. Next agenda item 10C is consideration of approval of the middle school acceleration request. Uh, those requests have been attached in your board book. What's the board's wishes on this agenda item? I'll move we approve the middle school acceleration request as presented. Okay, do we have a second on that? Second. Second by Mr. Walstead. Any questions or discussion? Thank you for your comments. Um, I'd just like to speak as sitting a, a sitting member of the policy committee. This was a very um, passionate discussion for us. Um, one, because we represent our students, and one, we represent them as athletes when they take on any type of sport. 
Um, but like we talked about in that meeting, there's students first, athletes second. So um, Mr. Conley, I wanna give him props for doing a very good job of answering all questions that day um, for or against. Um, and they're not even against, I would just say they're making sure that everybody's taken care of from coaches, staff, parents, and students. Um, and Mr. Swint, I, I shared some of the same um, concerns with you, and I still do. I was an, a yes vote on this in policy, and I still will be a yes vote on this, but I also want to commend Mr. Conley for giving us that report on Friday that did explain some of the reasoning, some of the comments, and also give you a little bit of a follow-up, and maybe Mr. Dr. Faley could give us some of his insight as well that we talked about. But one of the things that was talked about is in this community, um, we have many travel teams now coming up that haven't been necessarily in the past. Um, it's becoming more consistent. We now have a basketball club that started in the last few years. So I think what we're gonna see is probably more of these in, in bigger quantities than we ever have in the past. And this may be that first year that we're kind of dealing with that. And so that's why it's a little bit, um, I don't wanna say overwhelming, but kind of a, a shock to the system because for me, seven to nine athletes, that's a lot. That's two teams in basketball almost, um, when really you only have three at the high school level. So if you're saying that nine students could be or are better than um, who is actually going out for the high school sports right now, you have the capability of having seventh and eighth graders be your JV and varsity team with this policy as it stands. Um, again, as Mr. Conley stated, that's between him and Mr. Fleck. Um, that's how we've written that policy, regardless of how we feel about it right now in this moment. That is how this board has voted. Um, again, Dr. Faley did a great job of just asking Mr. Conley in his role to continue to make sure the process will be consistent, that it will be fair, and that not just this year we may have seven or nine students based off one team, that next year we may have seven or nine students based off a different team and a different team the following year. Um, because I think that's where people are going to be watching is to make sure that not only that we know this is coming, but that there's fairness in how we do it. And again, that is where the board has to step away and allow our admin and our AD and our coaches to watch that process, make sure it's done correctly. And if the board sees any problems at that point, then we would change the policy. But uh, Mr. Swint, I just wanted to give you some feedback on how I was feeling that day. Um, as just a parent, as a sports fan, and all those things, but also as a board member. Um, but I do want to give you the benefit that Dr. Faley and Mr. Conley were very adaptive and very understanding to all our, our concerns about their mental health, um, their ability to be watched, um, you know, when they get on those bus from seventh grade classes, and then they're on a bus with seniors for, we travel a long time. Sometimes we spend the night for two nights, you know, so you're talking about seventh graders being with seniors for two days without parent supervision and only a couple coaches. But again, that goes back to we hired these coaches and we allowed these parents to sign these students up for this acceleration program. So that's just my input I wanted to give you guys from the policy committee. And Dr. Fadley, I would love if you had any comments about how we're gonna watch their mental health, um, not only just their athletic abilities. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I can add is that uh, I think we hire our athletic directors and our coaches to make those particular decisions regarding how our athletes are going to perform. One of the things that I appreciated was um, in the acceleration request that really identified from the athletic office which students were going to move um, pretty much right away and which ones would be at the end of the season, which is um, uh, the end of the season ones, I do understand to get them uh, <clears throat> additional uh, interaction with other high quality athletes in practice and in games. Um, the reality is, as you have, have stated, um, most of the individuals that will be elevated to the varsity level have been competing with older kids and athletes already in their experience, and they are developmentally and athletically ready to make that leap. And I'll just point to a couple of, of, of examples across the state. Um, it's nothing new. I will add that um, um, state champion um, Minot um, from last year had an eighth grader 
who participated on their varsity, varsity team um, was the most valuable player of the tournament. So kids are coming to us with all different skill sets, and we need to, as a school district, recognize that there will be some individuals that rise to that occasion, but ultimately we have to place our trust in the professionals that coach these uh, student athletes and uh, administer our athletic program. In terms of mental health, I will hold Mr. Conley and the coaching staff to a high standard to make sure that not only are these uh, students continuing to perform academically in the classroom, but also um, we will monitor their behavior. And if the need arises, we will make shifts and modifications if they are not mentally ready um, for this change. I have uh... I, I will vote yes, just because of your recommendation and Mr. Conley's recommendation. I have seen this work terribly good, and I've seen this work terribly bad. I think that for you to watch this very closely, it can, it can become something very, very good, but it must be supervised very, very closely. Thank you, Mr. Casmer, Ms. Williams, Dr. Fadley. Anybody else with any uh, questions or comments? Just a, a few last comments from me. Um, I, I'm supportive of this. Uh, these requests were originally on the agenda. Last meeting, um, I did not feel that the administrative uh, regulation as it was currently drafted and in the district allowed for the acceleration request that's before the board this evening. Uh, so after some discussion with Dr. Fadley, uh, that was removed at the last board meeting for policy committee to take a look at that administrative regulation. Uh, and that subsequently has been uh, addressed and modified uh, to fit the um, philosophy and direction of the district as it comes to this. Um, I certainly have no problem with um, middle schoolers competing at the high school level if they're ready. And uh, they're ready to compete, they're ready. Uh, my biggest concern as well is, is the mental, social, emotional side of that, but I don't think that that's my decision really as a board member to, to monitor that. I think that's really between the coach, the athletic director, and, and the parents uh, to know if their kids are, are best ready for that. So I'll be supporting it this evening as well. Any final comments? All right, let's call the roll on this, Amanda. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Kasmer? Aye. Renner? Aye. Swint? Aye. Junt? Aye. Motion carries. 10D is consideration of approving the general journal entries uh, related to 2021 2022 and then uh, current school year 2022 2023. Um, attachments related to those adjusting journal entries uh, have been provided in your. Uh, board book, and as Dr. Fadley mentioned earlier this evening, um, this will be uh, something that you'll see on a you know regular basis moving forward. If there do happen to be adjusting uh, journal entries, um, it'll go to personnel and finance committee first for review and consideration, and then up to the uh, full board in order to continue to improve our internal controls related to the uh, business office and accounting. So. What is the board's wishes on uh, this one this evening? I'd move to approve the general, general journal entries 2021-2022-2223 as presented. Okay, do we have a second on that? Second. Second by Ms. Williams. Any questions or discussion or Dr. Fadley, anything that you wanted to add on this? I just want to commend the uh, the business office and the individuals for meeting my challenge. Um, it is a significant ask to have them go back through the entire 21-22 school year um, and then catch up for 22-23, but they rose to the occasion and met the expectation, and this will become part of our general practice moving forward and part of the the movement um, under my leadership to improve our internal controls in all aspects related to our finances. Thank you, Dr. Fadley. Ms. Williams? 
Yeah, I would also like to tell the business office and Dr. Fadley, thank you guys for working on what we're trying to implement even before the audit came out and all those things. Um, our business office, as just one board member, has been through a lot in the last few years um, from the changes, from just everything that they they went through. And I just want to tell them thank you so much for all that they do. They've, hang, they've hung in there. They've been positive, And they have moved on to the vision that is D7. Um, and I appreciate them so much, and I appreciate seeing these items come on because to, to one, it may seem just like one item, but this item has been a year and a half in the making, and I'm very proud to have it on this first agenda. So, and I look forward to seeing it every month moving forward. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, Amanda, let's call the roll on that, please. Williams? Kazmer? Aye. Brenner? Aye. Swint? Aye. Wallstead? Yes. Gent? Aye. Motion carries. 10E is consideration of approving the National School Public Relations Association uh, contract. A copy of that proposed contract is in your board packet. Uh, what's the board's wishes on this agenda item this evening? I'd move to approve the NSPRA contract. Okay. Do we have a second on that? Second. Second by Mr. Renner. Um, any questions or discussion? Dr. Fadley, anything you wanted to introduce on this one? Just real briefly as um, part of our strategic plan priorities to assess our communications throughout the district. And as a fairly new district, um, we felt it uh, was a necessity to get some guidance. Although we have improved our communication, we truly don't believe that we're where we want to be and we're looking forward uh, to some of those recommendations that we can implement both short and long term. Thank you, Dr. Fadley. Board members, any questions or discussion on this item? Just another thing that we have been talking about, and again, want to give Mrs. Denovan kudos on this. She has been an amazing step up for our communication team and for this district and the communication that our, our stakeholders, parents, and everyone gets. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It has been very noticed, and anything we can do to help her or that department to continue to benefit is a plus for me. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Anyone else? Questions or discussion? Okay, let's call the roll on that, please. Kazmer? Aye. Renner? Aye. Swint? Aye. Wallstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Junt? Aye. Motion carries. 10F is consideration of approving the uh, Johnson Controls uh, proposal. Copy of that uh, contract and proposals attached in the board book. Uh, what's the board's wishes on this agenda item? A motion to approve for Mr. Kasmer. Is there a second? Second. Whichever one you pick there, Ms. Denovan. Any questions or discussion on this one? With Johnson Controls, how will this help the school keep the record of issues? Um, we have had some in the past. Uh, I'd like to make sure we're keeping a record of those so that if we're going to go into a contract like this internally that we're making sure that we're giving the best to Johnson Controls and not just the things that are being around. There's been complaints in the past that have not made it to Johnson Controls, and I think we need to ensure that they are getting those complaints directly from, from us and that we have a record of it. Thank you, Mr. Swint. Um, I would add that um, I added additional language through um, Vogel Law Firm to make sure um, that all of those issues are, are taken care of moving forward. Uh, in addition, um, it was uh, Leroy and myself that met with them, and they will be providing uh, my office with a monthly report as per my request so that I can share that with the board um, in a, uh, on an ongoing basis. Thank you, Mr. Swint and Dr. Fadley. Any other questions or discussion on this item? Okay, Amanda, let's call the roll on that, please. Renner? Aye. Swint? Aye. Wallstead? Aye. Williams? Aye. Kazmer? Aye. Gent? Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda, 10G, is consideration of approving the 
capital uh, projects list. A uh, copy of that proposal for uh, the next two years has been attached in your board book. Uh, what's the board's wishes on this agenda item? I'll move we approve the capital projects plan as presented. Okay, do we have a second on that? Second. Second by Ms. Williams. Uh, discussion and any questions? Yeah, I'd like to see things get done too, but where does the money come from? I just would like to know, and I don't know that we know how much money is in our building, in grounds. We've allocated money for CTE. I think we, you know, and I like all these projects. I think they're a needed deal, but I, I think we need to know where exactly these monies are coming from. And we don't even know how much money is really in our building fund to date. So um, just to, to kind of address Mr. Kasmer's concerns, um, I also have the same concerns in, in reference to making sure that as superintendent, um, I do a phenomenal job of communicating where we're going to pay for these items from. So if you remember, dating back to our long range facilities plan back when Mr. Schatz was here this past May, we know for a fact that we have um, $850,000 that is available for some of these projects. Um, we also, um, in the month of January, will have all of the balances for our funds um, as a result of the audit. We'll be able to take what the state auditors tell us is the starting number for, um, for us to, to move on from. So that will be a presentation that will occur in the month of January for this board. And then we also have the ESSER $3 that are out there for this board to um, make decisions on, whether it be for additional uh, funding for the CTE building or whether it's for some of the deferred maintenance that has accumulated over the course of the last 20 to 30 years in our school district. So those are the three funding sources that are available. And again, it's going to be contingent upon me and the Buildings and Grounds Committee and the Finance Committee, Personnel and Finance Committee, identifying the funding sources to recommend to this full board for their consideration and decision. So we're not moving at light speed. We're moving at a speed that we know we have the funds available to do many of the projects that are listed tonight. We, we did, Dr. Faithley did in Building Grounds present to us how he was going to pay for this. And so these first two years, it's quite a bit of money, but it's coming out of SR3. Once you get to the third year, it's going to be probably drastically less what we'll be able to spend, but closer to that $800,000 figure, which is the income from the building fund revenue. And I think it's important for the board to take under consideration this evening the, the ask or a yes vote on the capital projects list is not an authorization from the board this evening to spend $5.7 million. That's, that's not what the ask is this evening. The ask is to look at the list as, been, as has been determined by administration, vetted through building and grounds, that this is the initial priority list. Um, there's certainly ESSER three um, as well as the annual Excess funds from the building fund allocation is certainly one possibility on, on how to pay for that. Um, we looked at the remaining ESSER $3, I think last board meeting um, was approximately $4.1 I think, Dr. Fadley, if I remember correctly. Just shy of 4.8. 
right? So once we get to the point where, you know, if this is ultimately approved by the board this evening, administration uh, as well as uh, maintenance staff can start to look at some of these projects and get hard numbers and hard bids to bring back through building and grounds to look at as well as personnel and finance uh, to firm up those numbers as well as the funding source at that point in time that the board is comfortable with. If it's ESSER 3, great. Um, if it's building fund dollars, you know, that might be an option too. Um, is it, you know, wrapped into a larger consideration in terms of deferred maintenance across the district as well as new elementary schools uh, in a bond package, certainly that might be an op a third option as well, depending on timing. So I think it's just important to realize we're not authorizing $5.6 million of expenditures this evening on this item. Mr. John, if I might also, um, it's one way of us to create uh, somewhat of an internal roadmap to take that, uh, that gigantic document that Mr. Schatz uh, put together and really um, try to, to tame it a little bit, just to prioritize what might be some of the initial things that we would want to tackle, depending on how the board chooses to fund it. Thank you, Dr. Fadley. Just one other comment. You know, the board wanted us, gave the Dr. Fadley direction to look at, to focus on safety and ADA compliant. And that's, that's one thing I was looking at as a building grounds member, and I felt that's what they really did focus on. They did a good job of focusing on safety and ADA compliance. Yeah, and I'd just like to say, when we met at Montreal Williams, this was a directive of the board to building and grounds to give us a list of the most high priority items, which was again, based off safety and ADA. So I kind of felt like this was just more of the list that was coming that was asked for. Um, and then kind of like you, John, I, I understand, I don't even know how much money we have, but I'm assuming if they've made this list through building and grounds, through personal finance, through Dr. Fadley, then hopefully here in the next month or two, somebody's gonna tell me kind of where it's specifically coming out of. So um, the list looks good to me. This is specifically what we've been asking for. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited, kind of like Mr. Swint said, to see some shovels hit the ground and start getting some of these things done. And I would agree with the list. This is not superfluous, it's not frivolous. It's pretty essential, I think, as long as you go on the list. Thank you, Mr. Walston. Mr. Kasper? Obviously, there's some of these things that have to be done right away, you know, when you're talking eating and things of that nature. All right, good comments, everybody. Anybody else, final comments or discussion? Okay, Amanda, let's call the roll on this, please. Swint? Aye. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Kazmer? Renner? Aye. Junt? Aye, motion carries. Uh, 10H is consideration of approving the purchase of snow removal equipment from Sourcewell National Cooperative uh, based off of the purchasing agreement number 031121 ACO. Uh, as Bobcat Ironhide is the local dealer, a copy of that proposed uh, quote is listed in the uh, package. What's the board's wishes on this item? And a motion to approve, is there a second? Second. All right, any questions or discussion? Do we have the personnel to operate the equipment? <laughs> yes. Anything else? All right, Amanda, let's call the roll on that, please. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Kazmer? Aye. Renner? Aye. Swint? Gent. Aye, motion carries. Uh, 10I is consideration of approving Joe's digging to complete the installation of uh, entry exit approach at Missouri Ridge. Copy of that proposal is in your board book. What's the board's wishes on this item? I'll move you. You can take the second, Mr. Renner. Second. All right. Any questions or discussion on this item? All right, hearing none, let's call the roll on that one, please. Williams? Aye. Kazmer? Aye. Renner? Aye. Swint? Aye. Walstead? Yes. Gent? 
Hi, motion carries. 10J is consideration of approving Knife River to complete asphalt paving and mobilization at Missouri Ridge for the new entry exit. Uh, what's the board's wishes on this one? I'll move on 10J. Okay, we have a second by Mr. Kasmer. Any questions or discussion on this? Hearing none, let's call the roll on that, please. Kasmer? Aye. Renner? Aye. Swint? Aye. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Gent? Aye, motion carries. 10K is consideration of approving uh, policies related to the lunch services donations and capital assets policy. Uh, neither of which have been assigned a descriptor code from NDSBA yet, so this will require a second reading on this. What's the board's wishes on this item? I'll move we approve the lunch services donations and capital assets policy on the first reading. Okay, do we have a second on that? Second by Mr. Walstead. Any questions or uh, discussion on either one of these? Okay, hearing none, we'll call the roll on that. Renner? Aye. Swint? Aye. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Kazmer? Aye. Gent? Aye, motion carries. 10L is consideration of amending policies uh, DE, which is the staff code of conduct, and DJA uh, substitute teachers. What's the board's wishes on these? I move to amend policy DE staff, co staff code of conduct in DJA as presented. Okay, do we have a second? Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Can I amend mine with the intention of having a second reading on that, please? You're amending to do a second reading on those? Waive the second reading on those, sorry. <laughs> okay. Got an amended motion to waive the second reading. Is there a second on that amendment? Is that you, Mr. Swint? Okay. Okay, we've got uh, a motion and then amended motion uh, to amend policies uh, DE, the staff code of conduct, and DJA, uh, substitute teachers, with a waiver of the second reading. Any question or discussion? I just plan on abstaining on 10L here in 10M due to a potential conflict of interest. Okay, duly noted. Anyone else? All right, let's call uh, the roll on the amendment first. Swint? Aye. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Kazmer? Aye. Junt? Aye, motion carries on the amendment. Any further discussion or questions now on the uh, full motion? Hearing none, let's call the roll on that, please. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Kazmer? Aye. Swint? Aye. Dunt? Aye, motion carries. Uh, 10M is consideration of approving retention stipend uh, for Williston Basin School District number seven. Uh, substitute teachers. Copy of the uh, proposal on that has been attached in your board book. What's the board's wishes on this one? Motion by Mr. Kasmer. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Walstead. Any questions or discussion? I just wanted to say on this one, as a board member, I know sometimes the public feels like we may or may not read our emails, but this was one that actually, you know, I've received emails from the public, from staff um, regarding this, and I just want to tell everyone thank you for reaching out that has, um, because sometimes it does put a a light on something that I, I may not know. 
and this was one of the situations where i definitely as one sitting board member wanted to make sure that we do represent our substitute teachers and make them feel as important as they should they are not full obviously full time employees but they are people that help educate our students and step in when needed so thank you dr fadley and the personnel and finance team for coming up with something that you know it may not be perfect but it's something and it's something that needs to be put in place moving forward as well um, which required us to also change our policy to allow us to move forward on these types of things moving forward. So again, just want to tell the public and the staff, thank you for their emails, and they are read and they are taken into consideration. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Anybody else, questions or comments? And let's call the roll, please. Lawson? Yes. Williams? Aye. Abstain. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We'll move to item number 10N. Then next is board action to select business manager candidate to offer business manager position pending employment negotiations. I will turn this one over to you, Dr. Fadley, to introduce uh, your recommendation. Mr. John, just to clarify. Clarification, did we, uh, did we accomplish 10M, the retention stipend for teachers? Okay. We, we did, yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so my recommendation is that um, the board um, offer the business manager position to Kent Anderson, who was interviewed by the board designated committee. Okay, uh, board members, uh, you were provided a copy of uh, Mr. Anderson's uh, resume in the Friday update. Um, maybe just a little bit of background for folks that are uh, listening here on Mr. Anderson. Uh, most recently was the chief financial officer at uh, Dickinson State University, and prior to that, uh, business manager at Dickinson uh, Public Schools here in North Dakota. Uh, CPA credentialed, uh, a lot of governmental uh, accounting experience. So uh, to me, looked like a, a very good choice and recommendation uh, from the hiring committee. So what's the board's wishes on Dr. Fadley's uh, recommendation? I'll move we offer the business manager, manager position to Kent Anderson. Okay, do we have a second on that? Okay, we had a second by Mr. Kasmer. Uh, any questions or discussion? Sir, Mr. Junt and Mrs. Williams, were you guys on the committee? Is that okay? Yes. Any other questions? And let's call the roll on that, please. Williams? Aye. Kasmer? Aye. Renner? Aye. Swint? Walstead? Yes. Gent? My motion carries. Uh, next item would be 10 0, executive session to discuss negotiating strategy reg regarding employment offer to uh, business manager under North Dakota Century Code 44 04 19.1, uh, subsection 9. Executive session to discuss negotiating strategy is necessary because holding such discussion in an open meeting would have an adverse fiscal effect on the bargaining position of the Williston Basin School District number seven. Williston Basin School District School Board is conducting an executive session to discuss negotiating strategy. At this time, a motion would be in order to conduct discussion in executive session rather than in an open meeting. Uh, is there such a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Renner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Walstead. Any discussion? Amanda, let's call the roll on that, please. Kasmer? Aye. Renner? Aye. Swint? Aye. Walstead? Yes. Williams? Aye. Gent? Aye. Motion carries. Executive session will be recorded. All members of the governing body are reminded to limit their discussion during the executive session to the announced topic. Any collective decision, collective commitment, or other final action by the governing body 
must occur after it reconvenes in an open meeting unless final action is specifically required by law to be taken during the executive session. We will now ask the members of the public who are attending the meeting to leave the room, please. 